Hi, everyone. Hi again. In the last segment of Crisis of Conscience by Ray Franz, uh, in the chapter Credentials and Cause, he's been dealing with the statistical turnaround from around 1970 to 1980. Mm -hmm. And we showed you the statistics last time and summarized them. And he points out that uh, somewhere between f half a million and a million Jehovah's Witnesses must have left during that 10 year period. Yeah. But fortunately for them, you barely noticed because the numbers were still uh, increasing, but not dramatically as they had before 1975. Mm -hmm. So he calls this the revolving door situation. He says, the reason producing this revolving door situation are multiple. I have no illusions that all of these more than half a million persons who left the organization in those 10 years did so for reasons of conscience or that every one of them is necessarily a humble, rightly motivated person, more concerned about truth than about self, many quite evidently are not. Some have pursued a course of immorality, either before or after leaving. Some who left because of disagreement have become guilty of the same wrongs they objected to, expressing vindictiveness, using ridicule, half-truths, and exaggerations. Some have even created disturbances at meetings or assemblies of Jehovah's Witnesses, conduct that I find deplorable. But I know personally many, many persons who are not like that, who give every indication of being decent, God-fearing, compassionate persons. If viewed from a selfish standpoint, they had everything to lose and nothing to gain from the stand they took and the course they have followed thereafter. Mm. In many cases, it was not some unkind treatment they themselves experienced that disturbed them. It was seeing such treatment meted out to others, seeing people suffer because of the rigidity, narrow-mindedness, even arrogance of men in charge, elders and others, or recognizing the hurtful effects of certain edicts of the organization that did not rest on a solid scriptural foundation. Rather than disgruntled, vindictive complainers, they have simply pleaded for greater compassion, a closer adherence to the example of God's own Son, the master of the Christian household of faith. This feeling for others is, I believe, a decisive factor as to the genuineness of motive. Similarly, a concern for truth, a concern not to be guilty of misrepresenting God's own word, a concern not to be hypocritical in appearing to believe what they do not believe, support what they cannot conscientiously support, condemn what they cannot see the scripture itself condemns. Such concern is, I think, also determinative as to the genuineness of motive of any taking such a stand. I know many persons who clearly evidence such concern, yet who are labeled as apostates, antichrists, instruments of Satan. In case after case after case, the sole basis for such condemnation is that they could not honestly agree with all the organization's teachings or policies. I feel an obligation towards such persons. In virtually every instance, a small group of three to five men, a judicial committee, met with them in secret meetings, where those who came as witnesses could only give their testimony, but not stay to witness the discussion. Later, a brief disfellowshipping announcement was read to the congregation that presented none of the testimony and none of the evidence in support of the disfellowshipping action. After the reading of that announcement, no witness was supposed to talk with the person's disfellowship, thereby shutting down any possibility of their expressing themselves by way of an explanation to friends and associates. For them to have done so before the disfellowshipping would have been counted as proselytizing, undermining the unity of the congregation, sowing dissension, forming a sect. For anyone to talk to them afterward would jeopardize that person's own standing make him liable for similar disfellowshipment. Mm -hmm. oh. 
An effective quarantining is thus accomplished. A lid is placed on any discussion of the matter. The record of the disfellowshipping and any claimed evidence now resides in one of the many vol how do you say that? Vol voluminous voluminous files at the Brooklyn Service Department or the files of a branch office stamped do not destroy this file containing the charges made against them their hearing is also secret not subject to review the scriptures tell us that a true companion is loving all the time and is a brother that is born for when there is distress and that was from uh, Proverbs seventeen seventeen. I thought I once thought that I once thought I had many many such friends, but when the crisis reached a decisive point, I found I had only a few. Still, I count those few precious, whether they said little or much on my behalf. Because of past prominence, people inquire about me. However, almost no one ever inquires about the others who lack such prominence, although they have suffered through the same experience with essentially the same costs and agonies. What must it mean to a mother who has seen a baby daughter come forth from her own body, has nursed that baby, cared for it through illness, has trained the young girl through the formative years of life, living her problems with her, feeling her disappointments and sadnesses as if they were her own, shedding tears along with her tears? What must it mean to that mother to have her daughter, now an adult, suddenly reject her, and do so simply because her mother sought to be true to her conscience and to God. What must it do to a father or mother to see a son or daughter marry and be told, for the same reason, that it would be best if they did not appear at the wedding, or know that a daughter has given birth to a child and be told that they should not come to see their grandchild? Well, Ray's going to get deeper into answering those questions and mm -hmm. in, the next, in the next segment. He says, this is not imagination. Exactly those things are happening to many parents who have been associated with Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, he wrote this 40 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. So if that were, was true then, and he was receiving dozens of letters, situations yeah. Yeah. and situations And we know like it's this. true. Once you've left, you, you discover all kinds of people who've suffered this way. And now we know about the world of the Pima, all those thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people who we think are hanging in there, not because they believe it, but because they know what the cost will be if they leave. Yeah. So Ray will get deeper into this uh, emotional hurt next time. Mm -hmm. We'll put in a link to hmm, one of your Bergman videos, Jerry Bergman videos, and the playlist, right? Yeah. This is about, this particular video is about the suicide of Charles Brown, who shunned his own parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also that playlist. Yeah. Okay. See you next time.